Hello everyone, Jason Porter from TGR Foundation here. Welcome to another TGR EDU Create resource video to help educators work with their students remotely. We'll make another video available tomorrow and hope you can join us for our interactive digital workshop and virtual office hours on Friday this week. Before we go to today's video, I wanted to answer a question the educator had from yesterday's video on using Zoom for distance learning. The question is, can you use Zoom to make screencasts? Zoom is actually a great tool to use to make simple screencasts, and it can be done with all the tools available in the Zoom account. A screencast is a video where you can share content from your computer, such as a PowerPoint or a picture, with your voice recorded over the top. Once you have created the video using Zoom, you can share it with your students over YouTube or Google Classroom or any platform that you're already using to share content with your students. You will see a link on your screen and in the description below for a video walking you through the simple process of using Zoom to create screencast videos. Now I'd like to turn it over to David Tong and John Foster to talk about leveraging effective digital learning tools to engage students at home. Hello to our educators. Thanks for tuning in in today's video on leveraging effective digital learning tools to engage students at home. My name is David Tong from the TGR Foundation and we also have John here joining us as well. Hi, my name is John Foster. I work with David at the TGR Learning Lab as part of the CREATE team. Glad you're all here. So in today's video, the purpose is essentially to share three effective and free digital learning tools that can support your implementation in the online and distance remote learning uh, for your students at home. And we also plan to have a uh, integration support session where you can come in with our virtual office hours and get some support from our TGR EDU Create staff and some other educators that would be attending that session as well. And we'll provide details at the end of this video on how to uh, join that session. So today we'll be sharing with you three digital learning tools. The first tool is called Edpuzzle. And it is a video lesson tool that provides assessment while your students are watching video clips, whether it be from YouTube or other types of streaming media. We'll also share about Floop, which is a digital feedback tool where students and their teachers can provide timely feedback using mobile devices. And then finally, we'll be sharing about Socrative, which is a web-based assessment tool where it allows you to customize questions and provide flexible ways for assessments uh, depending on what existing curricula you have or lessons you might have it's a great tool to get some real-time feedback as well and with all three of these tools uh, we'll be providing a virtual office hour session on friday march 20th at 11 a.m pacific time where you can join other educators and the tgr edu create staff to support you on the implementation of these tools So our first digital learning tool is Edpuzzle, which allows teachers to assign videos for the students to watch. And during that uh, viewing, gives them questions to respond to and gives teachers an assessment of how well the students are taking in the information and how uh, well they've progressed. So uh, here's Edpuzzle's dashboard. So once you've created your account and you've uh, migrated your uh, student lists in, uh, this is uh, going to show you where you can uh, pull out your content. Uh, there's curriculum that's already established and popular channels have already been listed for you. Uh, Edpuzzle has its own list of curated videos that have already had questions added to it. And then you can go into Khan Academy, National Geographic, and add or subtract questions as you like. Uh, I do uh, recommend previewing the videos before you decide to show them to the class. But then as you come up here, you go to My Classes. Uh, this is my archaeology class and I've selected this video right here for the students to watch about the laws of superposition. Um, you can see my one student in the class has not watched it yet uh, so I haven't given them a grade or anything like that and uh, they have not turned it in yet uh, but what you can do is go in and look at the questions uh, they'll give you the timestamps as to when that's in there uh, a lot of them are multiple choice but there are also choices for short answer um, down here at the bottom you can see uh, open-ended questions as well and uh, you can share those assignments with other teachers download the grades um, delete the assignment you can also come in here and assign a due date so you give them a you know three or four days to watch the video or leave it really open-ended if it's uh, you're kind-hearted and uh, once that's done you can look at the analytics and see where the students are getting hung up on things and address those things in class it's a good way to introduce the topic so that when you come back into the classroom, 
uh, you can get right into uh, addressing those uh, finer details of the, the uh, subject matter. So now that you had an idea of uh, what uh, Edpuzzle is capable of, we're going to talk about another tool that uh, gives really good feedback quickly is called Floop. Um, it's a feedback tool that uh, uses smartphones and other devices to allow students to submit their work for you to see in real time, make uh, comments, get it back to them very quickly. So it really streamlines the process of the students uh, getting some understanding of where they're going wrong or whether they're going right in their assignments that you're giving them at home. All right, moving on from Edpuzzle, where we have an assignment that we give the kids to in a virtual classroom, uh, Floop uses a very similar situation. Uh, what the kids are going to be doing is uh, they'll download the app, uh, enter into the virtual classroom, and then uh, this is the teacher's dashboard. It shows the, all the assignments. So right here I've got my class for archaeology. And you can see that uh, for my students I've come up with this assignment right here. So draw an archaeologist. And what they would see on their app is this assignment here. Uh, here's my list of students. And what I can do is go in here and click and see what their submission is. So they've drawn a picture of an archaeologist doing archaeology, whatever they thought uh, that uh, brought to their mind. This one right here said, I like the impression of action that uh, archaeologists um, are outside doing things. Uh, and this is typically what you're going to see as well. Uh, and then you can keep adding comments and you can open this up to peer review. And so uh, their peers can comment on this. And one of the nice things about this is it's completely anonymous. You don't know whose work you're commenting on and they don't see who's commenting on you. So it kind of keeps things on a more reasonable comment level. Um, but they can uh, put what they think up there. One student might say all archeology span isn't done in the field. And sometimes they work in a laboratory. Uh, and they can put those up there as well. Thanks, John, for sharing us a little bit about Floop. Uh, the third tool I'd like to share with you all today is called Creative. And this tool will really allow you to uh, share customized web-based assessments uh, for your students in various forms, whether it be true and false, multiple choice, um, open-ended questions. And you can really tailor it to some of your existing lessons or activities that you have your students uh, doing in this next couple of weeks. All right, so let's take a look at Socrative. What you see here is a student login page and all they need to do is to type in the room name. So once they type that in, they click join, they'll see the assessments that you have prepared for them right off the bat. On this screen here, you'll see this is actually the teacher portal. So once you sign in uh, through your teacher account, this is the room code that you will provide for them. It's a unique code. In this case, it's called STEM Studio here and then uh, if I wanted to share this with my students, they'll be able to see the, the, the quizzes or whatever assessments that I have ready for them to go. Examples of, of assessments, you can see here, uh, here's one called Math Facts. Uh, this is just a simple, you know, testing of, of uh, multiplication facts. You select the correct answer and you just have them submit. Uh, if you want to go more in depth, you can have, for example, a topic on coding. Uh, you can create the questions here, type in the answers, um, and then choose whichever ones are correct or incorrect. Variations from true and false questions, uh, multiple choice, um, open-ended questions as well. And of course, you have to grade those open-ended questions yourself. Okay. And to see reports, uh, you know, these are actually generated automatically once they're done with the, um, the actual code. So I'm going to pull up one example here. Let's go into some of the coding here. Uh, this example is coding in JavaScript. If I click on show answers, you actually see all the incorrect and, and correct answers that students are, are um, uh, entering. And then it's actually live in real time as well. So, you know, if you share it and you're noticing kind of some gaps in the answers or maybe someone hasn't progressed, um, perhaps you can reach out to them uh, virtually and see if they need support. Um, but it's actually real time as well, which is kind of neat. And what's also great about the reports, you can even um, download it as an Excel spreadsheet individual student PDFs, so then they can actually see it themselves, the incorrect and correct answers, or even questions specific for your own use. So many different ways to see the results. And one thing I also want to point out in this section over here, you can see how many students have um, joined that specific uh, uh, room at that current time. So you can also kind of see the activity that's happening as well. So again, 
we like to use Socrative because it's, it's really um, able to supplement what you have existing um, in our classes at the learning lab. Our instructors have used it to you know, kind of see some um, assessments and, and see their progress throughout the class and also throughout the longer period of time as well. So lots of different great ways to, to use the, the software. Um, and then finally, the exit ticket might be a really great strategy to use. All you need to do is to simply click on it and it will allow you to um, capture three different questions from the students. First one is, how well did you understand today's material? Second one is, what did you learn in today's class? Or in this case, what did you learn today? <laughs> and finally, you know, please answer the teacher's question. So that could be a question that you ask them, whether they a question of the day or something wherever you're messaging this question, um, they'd, be, they'd be putting their answer in, in this spot here. All right, so that's kind of an overall of Socrative. And, and it, again, it's, a, it's powerful in its flexibility and simplicity of how you can apply it into um, existing curriculum. So we hope that you found these three tools to be helpful in supplementing your students' online learning. If you do have any questions or would like to join us on a working session with other educators and our staff here, please visit us during our virtual office hours on March 20th at 11 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be connecting via Zoom and you can join us using the link in the video description below. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in and a shared thoughts, ideas, or questions in the comments box below. Take care. Take care and have fun learning.